As the 21st century got underway, the curse of the Bambino still lingered over the Boston Red Sox like a dark cloud. For more than eight decades, since regrettably trading Babe Ruth to the New York Yankees in 1919, the once mighty Red Sox hadn't won a championship. That fateful deal placed a curse on the Red Sox, as the story goes, and the laundry list of agonizing near misses that followed only gave credence to that theory. Bill Buckner's nightmarish error in the 1986 World Series being the most infamous example. Little roller up along first, behind the bag! And then, in decidedly unceremonious fashion, a hero arrived. The unlikeliest of heroes. A scuffling young slugger still reeling from his release from the Minnesota Twins, David Ortiz was a nobody when the Red Sox signed him to a one-year deal in the winter of 2003. Before long, though, Ortiz would be the heart and soul of the Red Sox, a transformative player who not only helped the franchise snap its almost century-long curse, but eventually became one of the most celebrated and venerated athletes in the history of Boston. The Red Sox found themselves in a frustratingly familiar place at the conclusion of the 2002 season, staring up at the Yankees in the division standings and missing out on the postseason for a third year in a row. Even with a talented roster loaded with stars like Pedro Martinez, Manny Ramirez, and Nomar Garcia Parra, the Red Sox finished 10 and a half games back of their most hated division rival and six games back of the American League wildcard at 93 and 69. Something had to change if the Red Sox were gonna snap their World Series drought and the club's new ownership group, which purchased the team shortly before the 2002 campaign, entrusted a precocious executive named Theo Epstein to spearhead that shakeup. Just a few weeks after the Anaheim Angels bested the San Francisco Giants in the 2002 World Series, the Red Sox made Epstein the youngest general manager in baseball history, and the intrepid 28-year-old wasted no time reshaping his Wobegon franchise. One of his first moves as general manager, and one that generated little fanfare, was the addition of Ortiz, a 27-year-old left-handed slugger who had recently been non-tendered by the Twins. A fairly highly touted prospect coming up through the minor leagues, Ortiz had been mostly mediocre over parts of six seasons with Minnesota. And though he had enjoyed a modest breakout in 2002, hitting 20 homers with an 839 OPS for the AL Central champs, the Twins decided not to tender him a contract for the 2003 campaign, making Ortiz a free agent. Ortiz was devastated and later described his release from the Twins as tantamount to his world ending. As fate would have it though, Ortiz was about to get another opportunity, thanks to a chance encounter. Shortly after catching wind of his release, Ortiz found himself wallowing at a restaurant in his native Dominican Republic, when who should walk in but his old friend Pedro, the three-time Cy Young Award winner and ace of the Red Sox. As Ortiz shared the bleak news with Martinez though, Pedro's face started to light up with excitement. Within minutes, Martinez was leaving a voicemail for Epstein imploring him to sign Ortiz, who, as it happens, had crushed a homer off of Pedro at the Metrodome months prior. Epstein, with holes to fill at first base and at DH in Boston's lineup, decided to listen to his ace and take a shot on Ortiz. With only weeks to go before the start of spring training in 2003, the Red Sox signed Ortiz to a one-year deal worth just over a million dollars. Little did they know, it was the best decision they'd make this century. Seemingly, within months of pulling on that Red Sox uniform, Ortiz was a different hitter, a truly fearsome slugger with more pop and contact ability than he had ever shown in Minnesota. Though he got off to a sluggish start in 2003 and found himself sitting on the bench a couple days a week, Ortiz had hit his way into an everyday role by the early summer. As autumn dawned, Ortiz looked like one of the game's premier offensive players. Slotted mainly into the number five spot in Boston's lineup, behind the electrifying 3-4 tandem of Nomar and Manny, Ortiz crushed 31 homers with a 961 OPS in 2003. He ultimately finished fifth in American League MVP voting, despite playing only 128 games. Thanks to Ortiz's breakout and a monster year from Bill Miller, another unheralded Epstein pickup, the Red Sox fielded the most prolific offense in baseball and ultimately snapped their three-year playoff drought, securing the American League wildcard. 
The Red Sox promptly bested the Oakland A's in the American League Division Series, despite a 2-for-21 showing from Ortiz, and then went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the mighty Yankees in the Best of Seven League Championship Series. And as the decisive Game 7 unfolded, the Red Sox, who had staved off elimination with a Game 6 victory in the Bronx, looked poised to capture their first pennant in almost two decades. Except, curse is gonna curse. There is action for the Red Sox in their bullpen in case Martinez stumbles. We're in the eighth and Boston leads by three. Rather than turn to his bullpen to protect a 5-2 lead in the eighth inning of game seven, Red Sox manager Grady Little opted to stick with his increasingly fatigued ace, Pedro, even as the Yankees mounted a comeback. A flare in the center field. Out of Walker won't get it. The base running of Matsui. He comes home. Nobody covers second. Tie game. By the time Little finally yanked his starter, after 123 pitches, the Yankees had erased their three-run deficit. Three innings later, Aaron Boone clobbered a Tim Wakefield knuckleball into the seats in left field, and the Red Sox were losers, once again. For his part, Epstein promptly went back to work and tried desperately to build a team that could overcome a supernatural obstacle to greatness. And it was indeed a pretty formidable squad that he put together. In 2004, the still-cursed Red Sox were even better than they had been the season prior, thanks to a revamped pitching staff, now featuring all-stars Kurt Schilling and Keith Folk, a new manager in Terry Francona, and continued growth from Ortiz, or as he had become known in Boston, Big Poppy. Ortiz earned his first of 10 All-Star nominations that year, crushing 41 homers with 47 doubles, 148 RBIs, and a 983 OPS for the Red Sox, who once again led the majors in runs scored, despite dealing away Garcia Parra, then a five-time All-Star, at the trade deadline. For his efforts, Ortiz finished fourth in AL MVP voting while carrying the Red Sox to 98 wins, their most since 1978. Was it good enough for first place in the division? Of course not. The Red Sox once again finished behind the Yankees, settling for another wildcard berth despite posting the second best record in the American League. And sure enough, the Red Sox made clam chowder out of the Angels in the American League Division Series, sweeping them in three games to earn a rematch with the Yankees in the League Championship Series. Oh, but that curse. Schilling got lit up in the series opener, then Boston's mighty offense shriveled up in game two. In Game 3, the Yankees quieted Fenway Park in a big way, taking a 3-0 series lead and putting the Red Sox on the brink of elimination with a 19-8 romp. For the umpteenth time, the Red Sox looked poised to succumb to their curse. Except, Poppy wasn't having it. With Game 4 all tied up in the 12th inning following an unforgettable Red Sox comeback in the bottom of the ninth against Hall of Fame closer Mariano Rivera, Ortiz started building his legacy. Ortiz in the deep right field. Back is Sheffield. We'll see you later tonight. In game five, another extra inning marathon, Ortiz was the hero again. Ortiz fights it off center field. Damon run into the plate, and he can keep on running to New York. Game six tomorrow night. Back in the Bronx for Game 6, Schilling and his bloody sock became part of Red Sox lore as the right-hander's gem keyed a 4-2 victory and forced a decisive Game 7. No team in baseball history had ever overcome a 3-0 deficit in the playoffs, though. There was no way the cursed Red Sox were actually going to pull this off, right? Wrong. They had Ortiz. And here's Ortiz. He rips one into right field. Back at the wall, 2-0 Red Sox. That first inning bomb from Poppy opened the floodgates, and the Red Sox ended up shellacking the Yankees 10-3 to capture their first pennant since 1986. In beating New York, the Red Sox had done the impossible, or at least the unprecedented, and that unforgettable series victory was the catalyst for the Red Sox exercising the demons that had plagued them for almost a century. Ultimately, the Red Sox made short work of the St. Louis Cardinals in the World Series. 
A first inning homer from who else, Ortiz, set the table for an 11-9 Red Sox victory in game one, and Boston cruised to a 6-2 win in game two, thanks to another brilliant outing from Schilling. In game three, Pedro turned in a masterpiece, tossing seven scoreless innings in a 4-1 win. And the following night, in front of a despondent crowd at Bush Stadium, the Red Sox locked up a victory and the catharsis 86 years in the making. Back to full. Red Sox fans have longed to hear it. The Boston Red Sox are world champions. At long last, the Red Sox had broken the curse. Ortiz could have retired then and there and still gone down as an all-time Red Sox legend. Instead though, he decided to hang around for another 12 seasons, serving as the backbone of the organization and the linchpins of their 2007 and 2013 World Series championships. And as he helped turn the Red Sox into one of the most dominant teams of the early 21st century, Ortiz also turned himself into a first ballot Hall of Famer. I'm calling you from Cooperstown, New York. But you know that the baseball writers have elected you to the National Baseball Hall. Yes! Across his 14-year run with Boston, Poppy averaged 34 homers and 37 doubles per season with a 956 OPS. His 483 dingers in a Red Sox uniform are second to only Ted Williams, and he ranks fifth on the franchise's games played leaderboard. Ortiz's postseason heroics didn't end in 2004 either. In fact, his game-tying Grand Slam in Game 2 of the 2013 ALCS remains one of the most memorable playoff moments in recent history. Hard hit into right, back at the wall, tie game! Big puppy! The Grand Slam! And over the course of his 14 World Series games, Ortiz, the MVP of the 2013 Fall Classic, managed an otherworldly 455 batting average with a 1372 OPS. Long before retiring in 2016, Ortiz had solidified himself not only as one of the most indelible players in franchise history, but an integral part of the fabric of Boston. There's a reason that it was Poppy who stepped up when his city needed consoling in the wake of the Boston Marathon bombings. This is our f***ing city. And nobody gonna dictate our freedom. Stay strong. Thank you. Ultimately, few players in any sport have ever meant as much to a city, both on the field and off, as David Ortiz does to Boston. Maybe the twins should have hung on to that guy. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button.